everyone. Welcome to a brand new edition of the Triple Trio, our weekly look at all things world racing through the lens of Hong Kong. Clint Hutchison, the best form analyst and the Hall of Fame jockey in RS Die as well is our super team. Hutch, welcome. Thank you, Rich. I'm really looking forward to this weekend. We talk about Hong Kong and we talk about the Cox Plate this weekend. We've got a lot to look forward to with Romantic Warrior and uh, meeting at the Valley, Shane. So it's going to be a huge weekend. And uh, our third member of our team has been talented enough to win the great race. There's something unique about it, Shane. I call it the best two minutes in sport, the Cox Plate. It's a fantastic race, you know, bef- 10 minutes before the race when you go under the tunnel and go out onto the track, the crowd roars with every horse that's called out. It, it, it's special because the crowd, it's a bit like Happy Valley, if uh, Hong Kong people don't know. The crowd is on top of you and you can feel them and Happy Valley's like that. So maybe the fact that Romantic Warriors won at Happy Valley uh, gives you some confidence that he'll handle the occasion, Shane. He won't have any trouble handling uh, Mooney Valley. He'll get around there as good as gold. All Sydney horses always got round um, Mooney Valley because, as you said last week, Richo, the track's very well cambered, if I remember correctly. That's right. That was the rare moment where you said that I was... Quite smart, or actually smarter than you thought I was. It was coming from a low base. (laughs) It was coming from a low base. And we look at our highlights from last week, Shane and Hutch. I'll be disappointed if that's not in it. Check it out. (laughs) But I thought this was one of the better bets on the whole card, actually. I thought that um, Buffalo River, I think it's just a great price. I expect him to roll forward. Buffalo River, 150 metres to go. A length in front of Climbing Star and then cause for concern. Buffalo River going strongly and Buffalo River wins the race for the second time. Second climbing star. Without a fight is my pick. Now the little caveat with this uh-oh, horse uh-oh. is they had to revet him. <laughs> without a fight coming at it. Without a fight. Fresh wind blows. The heat in unison. Without a fight. Without a fight for the Caulfield Cup. Champion Method looks like uh, one runner that has a, a very good chance in aestheticism is the other one, races three and four in particular. Yeah, no, it's actually a nice ride to get really, uh, from, from, from Danny because you know, he's, he's been actually supporting me quite nicely and it's nice to get a winner for him. It is still champion method, Ruby Lot champion instinct, here's a go, champion instinct, he's rolling in badly on the inside lifting, champion method might have come back and made it two for two. But- so the big question that everyone would like to know is, where's the bit about me being a little smarter than Shane thought? <laughs> yeah, and make sure the simple questions, are, they don't ask simple questions. That's the other thing that we've got to concentrate Shane, on. Shane, did you edit that package or edit that bit out? I don't touch anything, Shane. <laughs> I don't touch anything. Hey, we've got a huge show coming up. We're going to burst out of the gates with all the latest. We've got a very special guest, Brenton Abdullah, will be joining us and so pleased to see him win with the big group two last weekend. Uh, Antoine Hamlin is going hiking with Nicole Purton. Now, Triple Trio, we ummed and ahed who should go on that hiking trip. We ruled out all us three. <laughs> so Nicole went on that hiking trip. Yep. That's going to be a beauty. First, let's burst out of the gates. We burst out of the gates with the Caulfield Cup and brilliant selection by you, Hutch. Without a fight was fantastic. Defeating West Wind Blows with Gold Trip. It was a driving finish. The three European bred horses, so one trained in Europe, the other two now trained in Australia, fought it out. And second and third out of, obviously, the Turnbull, which featured Romantic Warrior uh, the last time, uh, well, for, for that last race or their lead-up race. Really good performance from uh, this horse without a fight, well prepared. They drew well clear of the rest. And Shane, it was a high-rating Caulfield Cup. This form will stack up pretty well. I totally agree. It was a very strong Caulfield Cup. It was a really good race. The winner should have lost the race for sure. They've got to do something about the rules in Australia. It's just wrong. They've got to go into English the way English do it. If you want to have a rule, you've got to enforce it. I've watched that race a hundred times, stopped it, slowed it up. If he didn't hit it the four times, I doubt whether that horse would have got there. Did you did you notice it live though? When you were watching no, it the first time? No, no. That's what I mean. No, so No, I didn't. I uh, did not. We don't do we really want to go down that path though, the same as England. We're talking, I mean, I, what we're talking about yes, is excessive use yes. of the persuader. Yeah. 
No, I don't yes, think so. definitely. 100% clip. You can't gain an unfair advantage. It's not right. I've spoke to other very good jockeys on this in Australia, and they want the rule changed also because they say it's not fair for us who are abiding by the rules if someone breaks it, right? Now, what's happened to Mark Zara? He hasn't missed a meeting. He got suspended for a midweek meeting that doesn't count, right? He should have been out for a Cox Plate, a Derby or a Melbourne Cup. And he got a $50,000 fine, which I doubt, I don't know, but if it was me, there's no way I'm paying it. The owner's paying it. So nothing's happened to him, and he's got a Caulfield Cup on his resume, and it's just wrong. I think it's prob- 100% wrong. It, it may be that what you say may be right. I mean, I'm, I'm not a fan of the rule. I think the rule creates so many issues around it as a consequence. It's there. The rule was brought in for perception. It's not really – is it horse welfare? Is it really? I mean, it's if you hit it eight whip. or nine times, is it is – it, it, It's a padded it, whip. It, it, exactly. I mean, we're doing enough as it is. I, I think it's a real mistake to pander to that and follow the path that they've done in England. I think never, we've got to stand firm. You'll never uh, appease the people no, you're trying to appease. 100%. We've got to look after people like uh, as it is in Hong Kong. Mm. If the horse is marked, the stewards do a, a, you know, look at it accordingly and then basically uh, you know, yep. adjudicate as a, as a consequence. But I get what Shane's saying. Is he saying well, the rule's there? Well, if you're, if you're going to have the, the rule, rule exactly. you've got to police it. Their yeah. biggest issue is they will not quantify what an extra strike of the whip will mean in distance. They refuse okay, to quantify Richard. what that is, so therefore they the un, only the way that they can decide, flip it, is if it's a dead heat. Because they'll yeah. quantify okay, the fact that it does improve to a degree. Richard, that, that rule is an ab- that that thing is an absolute joke, right? Yeah. And I'll tell you why. How much ground if a horse has a drug in its system does it make up? Well, we don't know. But they do That's right. but they but eliminate you're disqualified. It. Correct. You're disqualified. Why aren't you disqualified or put back? If you hit a horse yep. too many times, that's the rule. The Correct. rule is you're disqualified and there's no difference, trust me, on a drug to a whip. No difference. But the, rule, horses the rules of the, that, that's bringing in to bring an advantage. A, a whip isn't only just the rule for the whip is being brought in for perception and not an and, and a safety thing for jockeys. So it's not it's not clear cut as far as that's concerned, Shane. You know okay, what? Okay, okay. The stewards have created this. Now in England, I was speaking to a jockey on the weekend who rode Champion Stakes Day, and he was saying he could have won a race for sure, but he knew he had hit the horse six times already. If he'd hit it one more, it would have won. He said, but he said he couldn't ride in the Breeders' Cup meeting two weeks time. And the Breeders' Cup meeting is very important for them. So he knew the rule. Now, if he hadn't hit that horse there, I doubt whether that horse would have won. And here's one of the best jockeys in the world telling me if he's giving a horse in a group race, another group race, one more hit, it would have won. But he can't. Exactly. Get rid of the rule. Australia (laughs) set the rule and they've got to go by it. But what the stewards did there, they're telling every jockey now, hit the horse, we're not going to take a race off you, we'll give you a fine, but... It doesn't matter, and you won't be suspended. But the you greatest nonsense, I mean, we don't want to go on about the whip rule for yeah. it, but the greatest nonsense about the whole thing anyways, if it is partly about perception, and you can hit them as many times as you want in the final 100 metres, then what's the point? of? I mean, it's, that's it's the ludicrous. Bit, that's the part of the race that's <laughs> replayed. Hey, we don't have time to flesh no. it out anymore, no. except to say, I think in summary, if you've got the rule, you've got to police it. Whether we should have the rule is, is another that? discussion exactly. point. We might yeah. pause two, it there. Two, two different questions, Correct. right? Do I agree with the rule? No, but it's there, so you have to abide by it and police it, and the stewards do not do it. Perfect full stop on that, Jane. Yeah. Full stop on Lucky Swain S as well, because knocked off again. So two runs back this preparation um, and site success. We're going to chat to Brenton Abdullah, so we'll flesh out this a little more when we're chatting to uh, Brenton. Uh, too good. A more um, proactive ride, I suppose, early from Zach here. Gee, it was a strange watch late, but give credit where it's due. Um, Brenton Abdullah rode a great race. He made Zach work a little bit more going to that turn. We'll talk to Brenton later about it. Um, he stalked that pair and, you know, rallied late. He still gave away a lot of weight, Lucky Swainess, but it was a little bit awkward for Zach late there. He seemed to, I don't know, hear He's something or look over or, his shoulder yeah. or try and straighten him up, but he just lost that little bit of momentum, uh, Shane. Yeah, if he doesn't put the stick away, the horse wins for sure. But he heard a call before and he thought he was laying in and causing interference. And, of course, he didn't want to be suspended. But if he doesn't put the stick away, there's no way that horse doesn't win. He wins for sure. Is he going as well as he's ever gone, Lucky Swain Air Shane? Well, I I did something wrong because when you go back, 
what was it, 14 pounds difference from the start before or something, yeah. Clint, those two? Like, it's a lot yeah. of weight. It's a lot of weight. Now, if you go back to the Group 1 races with Sight Success, he's not far away, you know? Yeah. He's a couple of lengths behind him. And he is a group winner, of course, Sight Success, and he never goes bad. I didn't take enough into the weight, right? But if they are level weights, there's no way side success is beating Lucky Yeah, Shred. I think he's about a two lengths. Like you said, Shady, he's probably two lengths off him. And yes. ultimately, the six and a half, seven kilos has been the difference with that run. So, international meeting, in the Group 1 sprint, do you want to be with Lucky Swainess? Is he your starting oh, point? absolutely. Or okay, you don't care who comes. You still think they When it goes back to weight for age, they're not going to be able to beat him, okay. the locals. He'll be uh, odds on, Richard. We respect him greatly. Oh, I just Sounds like you're not that Well, keen. I've just seen a few things with him, with the swish of the tail, that, et cetera, that I just think is he's, he's 10% off what he Well, was. I think Zach did comment in the local press he's not still fully wound okay. up, so maybe there's something in that. Rightio. Um, doubles left, right and centre uh, during the week. There were, so it was uh, you know good to see a number of these riders go through. Hugh Bowman keeps... keeps uh, the winners rolling on. This was, of course, formerly Thrombone, Invincible Sage, Patient Ride, Rally Blake. Win. The race, the race didn't rate that well with me. I'm, I'm not sure why, but because there's a few in there that you think would go quite well, but I'm not sure whether to stick with him or not. Um, here's a look at Rising from Ashes, who was Keegan Demello. Keegan's riding well, Shane. Rode two winners, rode them very well. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of boys riding or riding well. Um, I'm not seeing many bad rides, and they're all saving ground now and coming through them. And he rode, well, rode the last one uh, very, very well because it got held up at the 300, and he never panicked. He saved ground, he waited, and then when the run come, because he had all the energy saved, that horse quickened, and it was a very, very good ride. And, Shane, you uh, thought straight away that Mark Newnham would hit the ground running when he got to Hong Kong. And he had a terrific double on Wednesday. Yeah, well, he hasn't had many chances. These both looked like winning before the race. I actually backed both of them. They, I don't think Last Dark got the best rides, but he um, corrected himself, Luke, on both horses, and he rode both horses perfectly, and they won. You know, Mark has only had a handful of runners, and he's only had a couple of chances. Yeah, no, he's going really well. So, you know, be pleased, though. I mean, there's sort of, what are we, 13 meetings in now? 13 meetings in now. So you'd want to start putting a few uh, in the back of the net. And there we have it. There's the trainer's ranking. We've got uh, Francis Loy. It looks very competitive, as you'd expect. Now, the surprise packet's obviously sort of the jockey's rankings yeah. and, and, and what's happened there. Zach's had a few meetings where he hasn't had a winner. and So he's, he's had 16 wins. He's had 19 seconds, whereas Hughes only had nine seconds. Yeah, um, and, and Hugh's going really well, but uh, obviously Hugh's on the sidelines now along with Vincent Owen, and you'd expect probably the next three, four, five meetings Zach's going to probably get up to 28, 29 wins, but there's mm. no doubt that he's come off a bit, you know, last season, unbelievable season, broke the records. He's normally going at about 24%, 23-24%, and he's beating market expectation since 2014, but in his last 100 rides, he's well off his yeah. best. He's sort of more 15%. And, you know, probably of expected 100 rides, he's winning on 61 of them. So it won't last long. He'll, no. he'll bounce back. Um, but, yeah, three meetings. And I wanted to ask, I was going to ask Shane, actually, if he'd remember, because I got the stats up on Shane, the longest that he went well, rides without a winner in oh, Hong hello. Kong. Shane, oh, do you... It would be over 50, I'd say. Hong Kong in those days were different because yeah. you had stable jockeys. So you couldn't ride for everyone. And then, um, like, David Hayes had a stable jockey. Um, Tony Cruz always had um, Felix Kutzi. Have you got a I'm number, Shane? Out. Have you got a number? I, I, I would have said 70. 60. 60. So you did better 60. than you went. Yeah. yeah. So at the moment, yeah. Zach's on 27 or 28, right. I think. So that's a lot for him. But Zach's, but pre-2011, he got up to 56. Seems a bit mean-spirited, that stat, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't seem a nice no, stat. No, just comparing it. Like, it was interesting to me to go back oh. and see because, you know, it feels like... Because Zach rides a lot of favourites. He's been beaten yeah. on 15 in the last three meetings. So it's a lot of favourites to be beaten on, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but it's actually... Hey, Clint, how many favourites did I get beat on in that 60? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if there were that many there. Amongst the three of us, how no. many Hall of Famers amongst <laughs> us? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but it is interesting as you feel it because he set such a high bar, Zach. He's you know yeah. he's so good at his craft, and he's probably down about five percent on where he's normally at. But it feels like it's 
been harder, but yeah, he'll, be, he'll be back. 19 seconds, I think that's yeah. the key. So he's around the money. Yeah. Uh, hey, the international entries have uh, been uploaded for what's going to be an amazing week of racing. Of course, the Jockey Challenge on the Wednesday night is elite. And then the racing action on the Sunday is fantastic. It's sort of the unofficial end of season world champs, isn't it? Um, so we look straight away at all the key races. We think about the Vars and there's a lot of Australian interest. The sprint with Lucky Swain S. Now, Will the mares like Bella Nipotina and In Secret go? They'd be uber competitive if they did. I think Star Patrol might go. Um, James Cummings has said he's keen on taking Cascadian as well. Right. So, and, and, well, who knows with Mr Brightside, we may have some news as far as that's concerned. That's right. And then Romantic Warrior eyeballing over the 2,000 metres. Uh, some, some interesting entries, whether or not they come from Australia or whether they come from other parts of the world. We know that uh, Aidan O'Brien's always got his eye towards that meeting as well. In fact, I just caught up with Ben Hayes to ask him the question. We saw Mr Brightside in the nominations there from a Hong Kong mile point of view. Uh, here's Ben's thoughts. Joined by Ben Hayes, uh, looking towards the Hong Kong International, what are your plans with Mr Brightside? Well, we're obviously running in the Cox Plate uh, this Saturday and then it just really depends with him how he pulls up um, because if he pulls up well, we'll look to run in either the mile or the 2000 over the cha on the championship day. And if he comes through that well, Richo, obviously Hong Kong's on the agenda, um, but it's all up to the horse. He needs to pull up well, tick all the boxes, and if we're happy, we'll be heading in that direction. And you're getting some influence from your dad to say, please bring him and showcase him to the Hong Kong audience? I would say big influence, um, but obviously uh, the horse comes first. So we've got to make sure the horse is 100%. And if we're really happy with him, it's something that we will seriously consider. So interesting insight there. So at all, we wait for the next two starts before we realise whether or not uh, Mr Brightside will be heading towards the international meeting. It'll be the end of a long campaign. I'm saying, judging by that, more unlikely than likely. OK, he's a tough horse, though. He, he is he can, tough. He can cop it. And the yeah. prize money's good. It is. And, you know, Dad's up there. Dad Hong wants Kong. to show, <laughs> show off this great horse. Uh, let's find out who joined that elite book of sweet in defeat. And they're off. And Sugar Sugar missed the start by four lengths. Then Dublin star, sugar, sugar, fast, buck, smart leader. Oversubscribe, lunges at the post, missed. Sugar, sugar, that's a sweet win for Alfie Chan. So the sweet in defeat file, Hutch, who should we put in there and watch for the future? Um, three runners from the past week, and Ruby Lott we saw in that replay, obviously in between runners, bit hampered late. He's ready to win one for David Hayes. He's had a couple of starts and finished, uh, placed in both of them. I actually think he'll appreciate going up and trip a little bit. He just doesn't have that turn of foot. Um, now, there was a big pattern at, uh, during the week at Sha Tin where there was, just, you know, obviously the rail was pretty significantly better. So I wanted to go with against horses that weren't on the fence. Aka Power was one, Back and Wide ran on, and Super Wind Dragon was another one. Shane, I wanted to ask you about this. This was some interference here, and the Champion Method won the race. Um, just you'll see the horse on the outside shift in and, and give um, Ruby Lot a, a, a couple of bumps on the way through and the whip, uh, the whip go out. Um, you know, a little bit of interference late, but horse seems to be going pretty well, Ruby Lot in general, and you can understand that uh, protest being or objection being upheld. Uh, it was going to be upheld pretty quickly. Um, it didn't take long for that one to be overturned. They definitely got that right, Clint. Yeah. He. Um, do you think not having, like, do you think not having the stick cost champion, uh, sorry, the horse on the outside, the race, he... he Alexi got it knocked out of his hand at the 100, mm. and he seemed to be coming there with the moment. needed to get the, uh, uh, the, the cap off. The, the cap off, yeah. Uh, Brazilian you think style. it cost him the race? I wasn't sure. I uh, think it might have. No, no risk it would have, you know. It, it's a big difference having a whip on a lot of horses. Um, I, I would say it would have. I'm not bringing a whip up anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah <laughs> I'm not bringing it up anymore. Uh, it's with great trepidation <laughs> that we move towards genius or slaughter. Meander Cross answering the urgings of Shane Dyer. Mannerism coming at him. Mannerism has got it. Daring tactics by Shane Dyer. He's got octagonal in full flight on the corner. Bold tactics by Shane Dyer going to pay off and he pinches the chipping door. Time for all the Hong Kong jockeys to sit up and take notice. Uh, a little masterclass here from uh, a Hall of Famer in Shane Dye. Shane, who caught your eye for some big ticks this week? There were a lot of very good rides the last two meetings, but this one particularly was 
Keith Yule. This is outstanding. Watch Jubilation here. He's drawn out. Now he starts to look around here. He's looking for the fence. He doesn't want to stay off. He's looking. He's looking. Let's get to the fence. Just perfect. You want to save ground. And he was first up the source. But the thing about him was when he got there, he got him relaxed. He wasn't pulling. And he just gave him the best ride. He never panicked. And up here on the turn, he just gradually come out. He saved all the ground in the world. And then he didn't get the horse off balance, check him. He just gradually, as you can see here, come out. And he keeps him in stride. And he's strong on him. And the track, didn't, we didn't know the first race where they were going to be winning from. But later on, we knew it was a huge leader's track. But he still lifted the horse to pick him uh, to pick up the leader and win the last try that that was a sensational ride clint unbelievable ride yeah and fortunately for uh, our subs who were on him oh um that track last year was exactly the same actually okay here's another one the stewards took in you'll see um um wong here on uh, perfect team who won he got a warning for that i've got nothing wrong with that there getting up inside alexi Bedell. he has a look because alexi was half carding but here is the worry he tries to go upside upside the horse in the white and he just has to come back and get checked there was no room there and this was a really good ride outside of that for a kid you know um, and then on the point of the turn, I think there was a run there for a few strides. He got a warning for that too. But if you have a look later on, the, the horse on the rails actually drifted out, but he anticipated a run. He kind of come back in and he switched him to the outside here. And he got a warning for the ride because it was dangerous at the 700 where he was going, Clint. Yeah. But I had nothing wrong with the first one. That was Alexi half carding. And when I say half carding, if you don't know, it means that you want to be on the fence, but you want to be half, uh, you want to be one off. You want two spots. So you want the fence, you want one off. So what you do as a jockey is you stay in between them and you come out a bit to be nearly one off. But you don't think a horse is going to go up on the fence. But him being a kid, he rushed up there and uh, I think he was entitled to actually, but not the second time. What about uh, from a scoring point of view, uh, Shane? Uh who got votes this week? Oh, geez, there was a heap, right? Now, Yui's two rides were sensational. Um, that Invincible, um, what was it, Clint? Um, Invincible Sage. Now. Yeah, that was outstanding. Like, he, he, he never panicked. He, he's back. one of the best straight course riders I've seen, Shane. He was great at Flemington. He had a lot of success. Do you think he seems very, very effective? I mean, in a lot over around a bend as well, but down the straight, he rides it so well. It doesn't matter where he is. He's just riding on another level. He, he, he's actually better than I thought he was, um, and that's full credit to him. Um, then you got Demelo. Um, he won on, uh, what did he, he won those two last race winners. Yeah, that was terrific. were outstanding rides. Terrific rides, both of them. Saved ground, got held up on one, but then come through. Atala um, Begil. Champion. Champion Method was Andrea. Now, he drew gate 10, and he come across so well. He just dug him a little bit without too much. Then he come back off the leader, sat outside the leader, held him up a bit. But when he went for him, he wasn't going to win. And the other two got to him. But if you have a look at him, he switched his stick from his left hand to the right. And when he hit it the last 50 metres, it found something. Can he lifted it over the line to a win. Um, that was a good ride. Now, Jerry Chang, also Jerry, on Fun Together, that was a perfect ride. One back, one out, never panicked on him at any stage, come out, kept them balanced, and he won. So there were a lot of very good rides. And, of course, Luke Ferraris, his two winners were good rides, and he corrected himself from mistakes the previous time. So he did really well. So there was quite a few there. Yeah, so Huey Bowman leads by four at the moment over Zach Purton and well, what are they playing for? Well, they're playing for this beautiful <laughs> oh, thing. How good. Have Watch a out. look at it. And you know what? That's the back yeah. of it. And then when we turn around, there he is. Yeah. Look at that little yeah. champ. Yeah. Look at little wobble <laughs> Richo, you know what they're going to do. They're probably going to throw it in the rubbish bin anyway. <laughs> you are joking. No chance. This is magnificent. That, uh, you know what I particularly like about it as well? Is the mullet? Is that one of? The, oh, it is the most Shane, beautiful he mullet. He did have the great blonde mullet back in the day. I did mean, you, he doesn't. He doesn't did you peroxide that mullet back in? The, oh, have a look at some of these <laughs> mullets. These are some of the great mullets. Joe Dirt, John. I was thinking, who? What other great blonde mullets are there? Oh, 
Did you dye yours back in the day, Shane? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. damn yeah. straight you did. What about John Daly? Now, John Daly. Now, I was listening to You Cannot Be Serious podcast, Shane, when Lloyd Williams was being interviewed by Sam Newman. And Lloyd Williams told me a, told a story about playing golf with John Daly after he won the British Open. He said, I brought him down to Australia. We played at Capital and we played against Shane Dye and Mick Dittman. And you and you played for money and Shane, you fleeced them. You won. Is that right? No, that wasn't at Capital. We Where was it at? Went to the, we actually went to the Metropolitan because, oh, um, because the Metropolitan, I think the Australian Open was going to be played there the next year or yeah. one of those major events. And John wanted to see the course, so we went there and played the Metropolitan. I played unbelievable. I was about four or five over, and he gave me 16 shots. So right. He had no hope. And you and he Mick no Dittman hope. took the reigning British Open champion and Lloyd Williams's money. Is that right? Um, no, well, they you got know, out the last time. I know one thing. I know one thing. That, 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 that night we actually went, I have, I've never told the story, oh. but John and I, but Lloyd told it, I'm told that John lost a lot of money at the casino. I was actually with him when yep. he lost the money, but uh, I never spoke to any press about it. Right. That was that night. See, mm. you were playing uh, pretty good golf, if you don't mind. Imagine winning the British Open and yeah. then getting fleeced by a couple of and jockeys. And I heard he said, I've never played with jockeys ever again. No, no, he That's said, I'm out. Done. He, he Done. said, never, ever again. <laughs> Clearly, Mick yeah, Dittman. You can also play well. got to remember that Mick and I, well, especially me, we're on different levels when it comes to gambling. Right. Not so Mick, but when it comes to golf, I, I'd bet anything it wouldn't worry me in those days. It right. just wouldn't worry me. Oh, there's so there many go. parts of that story we could unpack. <laughs> um, we will with this beautiful bobblehead into the future. Uh, let's get uh, the inside running. Hey, this is a beauty. The Cole Purton going hiking with Antoine Hamlin. Hutchie wanted to do it, but didn't think he was capable. So we said Nick. <laughs> this week, I'm with French jockey Antoine Hamlin to find out more about his life off the track in Hong Kong, which happens to literally be on the rocks. Antoine, you love the outdoors, hiking, rock climbing. How has this passion developed? This passion started a few years ago. Uh, I got a bit, big suspension in France, and uh, so I go in the mountain for a week, and uh, it, the passion really starts here. Since that day, I never stop, and uh, I need at least twice a week to go in the mountain somewhere to get lost and enjoy the free time. We're here in Sai Kung hiking. What is it about these outdoor pursuits that helps you deal with the high pressure of being a jockey in Hong Kong? Yeah, it helps you to release uh, all the pressure, not only the jockey, maybe home pressure, wife pressure, baby pressure, any pressure getting me out when I'm outdoor. Your first Hong Kong ride was Sonwa in the 2012 Hong Kong Cup. How important was this horse for your career? That horse is uh, yeah, very important for sure. It's the, the champ for me. Uh, I was apprentice when I start to roll him and then uh, I'd be professional when I rode, when I won the French Derby. Yeah, I will never forget him. What have been the most exciting climbs that you've done and are there any that you'd still like to tick off your list? So the most exciting climbing I did is the Mont Fuji uh, off season. Uh, it was again because of the suspen suspension in Hong Kong. So I went in I went Japan and I did the Mont Fuji on my own. Uh, alone, it was a uh, very awesome, and amazing, and the top was snow everywhere, ice, and it was really, really great experience. And is there any others that you'd like to tick off your list? Uh, yeah, actually, I have a target. It's, uh, it's, it's called the Seven Summit. It's to climb the seven highest summit in uh, seven continents. So uh, I still have some to do. I did three, and uh, I will keep working on. Uh, but uh, of course, the, the big target will be the Everest, but maybe long. In the, in the future, not yet. I need a lot of time and a lot of money for that. But the Everest, to be honest, I'm not sure I will be able to do it because now it's touristic attraction. It's so many people. It's the queue going to the summit, everyone waiting. It's like a thousand people waiting, maybe a hundred, couple of hundred per, per day can do it. And the meteo, the wet the forecast, the weather condition have to be perfect, otherwise it's very, very dangerous. What kind of weather conditions does it have to be? Clear, perfect, no wind, 
no snow because uh, at 8,000 meters high, it's like the, the weather changed very quick and you need a long time to go down to the camp, base camp, so. Do you get more of a thrill out of riding in a race or climbing a peak? That's a good question. Uh, I think I need both because uh, the mountain, you competition with yourself only and riding a race is the more competitive with the other and uh, I need to prove I'm the better one, so. I would say race. And it's Tempest Express in front here for Antoine Hamlin to cap off a magical afternoon. He's going to ride half the card. Five winners for Hamlin and Tempest Express. What a day for Antoine Hamlin. What goals do you have as a rider in Hong Kong? Quite similar goals as the old jockey. Uh, win most, most as possible of race. And the big one, of course, is always the target to the jockey. It's not the number, it's more the quality. And uh, yeah, I wish I can have an average of 30 winners per season. I would be happy with that to, to stay and enjoy the life in Hong Kong. And that's a triple this afternoon for Antoine Hamelin. How at home are you now in Hong Kong with this being your fourth full season riding here? Hong Kong is my new home for sure. Uh, I really enjoy the life here. Uh, I think I found the city I needed because I can have the city and the mountain very nearby. So if you want to walk up, you just take 10 minutes out and then you're easy in the forest, lost in the middle of nowhere. Not like, not like everyone thinks Hong Kong is only the building city and, uh, and there is city now. Not that much, so I really enjoy it. Global Racing concentrates on an unbelievable race meeting in Melbourne. The best two minutes in sport. The WS Cox Plate and the Whirlpool will be betting on uh, the majority of the races throughout. The Manicato Stakes, a Group 1 sprint over 1,200 metres. And then the famous Cox Plate over 20, 40 metres at the Valley in the tight amphitheatre. And the Hong Kong champ, Romantic Warrior, will be the favourite. Romantic Warrior, three horse go in the derby, California Spangle, Romantic Warrior, the Spangle lifts, the Warrior comes, and Romantic Warrior wins the derby! But it's all Gold Trip, Gold Trip has bolted in the Turnbull, Westman blows second, Sulcum third, and Romantic Warrior four. He's improved plenty, you know, so we're, we're quietly confident going into Saturday that we've, we've made enough improvement to be competitive, that's for sure. Utopia. It's a really great honour to send a horse to run in the cosplay. One of the most major races in Australia. I'd like to see him, like when he's in the parade, get on his toes a little bit because when in Hong Kong he was really, once he gets up to the pony, he's, he's always he's quite marchy, he's a very competitive horse and um, yeah, hopefully we'll see that at um, uh, the cosplay. But it's Romantic Warrior, he's blowing kisses to the crowd and he's going to win his second QE2. If I can win, I can create a history. Uh, I mean, that's good for a big meaning for me, Hong Kong Jockey Cup and Australian uh, Turf Cup as well. Hopefully, we do the best and God do the rest. Yes. He is the perfect racehorse romantic warrior and he's now a Hong Kong Cup winner. He is a Hong Kong champion and he gets an opportunity here to show he's a world champion. You win the Cox Plate, you're a champ. There's no doubting that. Yes. Can Look at the honour roll. The honour roll is unbelievable. That says it all, doesn't it? Yeah, it certainly does. And I love that piece of work, Shane, that we saw from Romantic Warrior at the Valley with J-Mac. He looks like, to my eyes, come on leaps and bounds with that run. Yeah, and he's got to, to win it. But I think he has also. And I was actually speaking to James the other day and he said, Shane, he's, 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 he's definitely fitter to what he was first, first run. So he's expecting him to improve. Now, the good thing about him the other day was the form from that race, Clint. The form was stood up and it yeah. was outstanding, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, well, we, and you saw West Wind Blows turn it around with Gold Trip. That's yeah. what can happen one run to the next. You improve that little bit. He comes back in weight. He comes back to weight for age. He trips a lot fitter for it. So he's got a lot more in favour. And I think Barrier 7, where they chose, perfect. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be with him. I think this is going to obviously be a big turnover race as well. And well done, by the way, I mentioned the Caulfield Cup. Turned over more in the Caulfield Cup than he did in the Everest. So yeah. this Cox Plate will go to another level again, I'd imagine, this week in the Whirlpool. So It'll be incredible, be won't it? Um, 
Now, these, these are some of the, uh, the key competitors, though. You just had to love the acceleration phase, Shane, of Fangirl. It's hard to see Mr Brightside defeating Fangirl on that run alone. Yeah, but the worry is um, jockeys because that horse there runs for James McDonald. If you go through her record, yeah. James is, I think, Clint nearly won on her every start. Mm. And then Karen McAvoy or someone gets on it and they run second on it, you know. So James has a very good association with that that horse. Now, you lose nothing with Sack because he's outstanding, you know. We know that. I'm, I'm more interested in uh, militarise with yeah. no weight, a three-year-old sitting back. You don't have to go extremely well in a Caulfield Guineas as he didn't, and the track didn't suit him that day. There's been many horses that run average in Caulfield Guineas, and they come out and they run very, very well as a three-year-old in a Cox Plate. Yeah, so you think was able to do that and win the Cox Plate? Shame one. The uh, Cox played on Octagonal, who uh, was a three-year-old and got right there on the line to defeat the Mighty Mahogany in an unbelievable finish. Um, here's the blood. Alligator blood... Um, Tuvalu will be running later on in the day in the Vars or early on in the day in the Vars. Does this tick the 2,000 metre box for you? Because I think he is defeating lower class no, horses. That was 1,800 metres. That was 1,800. Then he went to 2,000. Once again, Caulfield Guineas days was a very windy day. Didn't make a lot of ground. He didn't beat a lot, but he ticked the 2,000 box. Mm. Um, not strongly, no. with a pencil. That's right. I think, I think the way to put it. But... He's a seven-time group or eight-time group one winner. So he's, he's a quality horse. He can take a position. He tries his heart out every time. Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bott, well, Gay hasn't won one. She's looking That's to right. win her first. He could do it, I think. But I prefer him 16, 1800 personally. And she'd be the ninth trainer to complete the, the, uh, the Grand what? Slam. So here is Richo, the, here one is the thing field. Is with Sorry, Richo. The one thing with him is he had his chance last year, you know. Yeah, and he got he beat two and, two and a half lengths. He got beat two and a half lengths. He had his chance. Yeah. Right? And and there's no way that this field is a weaker field than last year, I don't think. No. that's the, And that's the question. There's four runners that ran last year that are uh, that are backing up. So it's a quality field for mine. Um, I'm with you, Romantic Warrior. I think Romantic the danger is the uh, European three-year-old. They always run well. El Bodigon should have won it last year, in my opinion. Armory didn't yeah. handle wet track, ran second. Well, nearly, State of Rest came out and won. They're nearly four, and they still get a little allowance. And I know mm. people talk about weight not mattering, but it matters. So I, I just think they'll all, you know, Aidan O'Brien targets the right horse for the uh, the race. Had a couple yeah, of no. light preparation. I think he'll run really well. Um, other races that uh, the World Pool you can bet into, and of course uh, with Wind Place and uh, and all the exotics, Quinellas, Trifectas, and the like. Crystal Miles, one of those. Yes. Um, you and I are going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in this head race. To head. head to head in this. Uh, who do you like? Well, I'm going with Antino, the new kid on the block. I think it's a straight cue. They think they have it between them. I know you're with Tuvalu, and I'll let you explain your reasons why. But it is a step up for Antino. Tuvalu's been there and done it. Brings the right form, the superior form and the superior rating. But just that winning strike rate with Antino. And I thought this last one, I mean, this is how close he was to winning a great one. Attrition on his inside fought back and won. But oh, he, he was superb. He was very good. He was very good, and I think this looks a nice setup for him. But he's going to need to be more proactive in the race. In but that's that that's right. a handicap, and now he goes to a wait for age, and he bumps yep. into Tuvalu, who draws an inside barrier. It's a big, big moment for Jamie Carr. She's been struggling with form. She needs to deliver here with Tuvalu, and he's been bumping into Mr. Brightside, Alligator Blood, um, and also Pinstripe, and they're all in the Cox Plate. And I think from that inside barrier, Antino's going to have to level weights, get past him. And that's a big, big query. I'm more Tuvalu than Antino. They have ridden Antino forward before, but I'm hoping they just go and park outside Tuvalu. Be a nice watch. Back, yep. Have something on the queue or the Quinella and um, take your pick who you want to Boys, find. just one, one quick thing. You do it, you Aussies, all the time. You know, I think the last major camp, uh, carnival in Sydney back in April, there were 10 Group 1 races. Eight were won by Kiwis, one by Australia and one by an English horse. <laughs> what about Powerness here? Yeah. What's wrong with her? Well, she's had that setback. So she was meant to be targeting a Cox Plate. Had the setback and then now comes second up here. I thought she ran really well first up on a really wet track. She'll run really well. And Roger James with his four-year-old mares, have targeted this in the past. Silent Achiever comes straight to mind, win this race, and then narrowly beaten a cock yeah. plate the following year. She'll run well, no yeah, doubt in that. I looked at her peak figures, uh, Shane. Her absolute best is 
good enough to be competitive, but she's had those issues and that concerns me. The other two are hard fit and ready to go and that's mm -hmm. why I'll be happy to take her on. As far as the Kiwis are concerned, well, I'll be shouting you home in the, uh, the All Blacks on Saturday morning against the, the South Africans, but uh, we'll Thanks, talk mate. about that didn't, later. Didn't you, didn't you tell me the winner of the Caulfield Cup had issues last week before the race? Had to be vetted. But had to be vetted twice. But apparently, according to the stable, they were saying all along, well, you know, and this it's, is once again the, this is how the, the way he moves. The way he he moves. So he sort of moves a bit like me, a little bit crabby, but they said he, <laughs> once he warms up, right. <laughs> once he warms up, he's good to go. Hey, in the Phillies Classics, another race uh, in the whirlpool. Yeah. Um, who do you like here? I think this is a good Quinella race, actually. I think Karina Queen, who beat um, a horse that could easily win the Oaks in Zadozi. Mm -hmm. I think Broadcast, who wide no cover last start, didn't get a, a crack at them in Sydney, was a great run. And this horse could be anything, Skybird. I thought she was short enough, but she may have a group one in the, in her, the way she's, uh, she's... If you like sectional stars, Skybird's your horse, and there's been good money for her already. I think you've summed up that race perfectly. It's um, a big opportunity there with the queue, and I think Karina Queen will be a good price. Uh, Captain Amelia will get back, but Johnny O'Shea and James McDonald team up really, really well. And also think that the Hayes boys, with Mark Zara in the saddle, horse number eight in Poifect, will get a beautiful run from yeah. that inside barrier. I did have something on Poifect last time, yeah. but unfortunately disappointed, but could easily bounce back from a better draw. So they're worth uh, considering from a uh, whirlpool point of view. All right, let's join our special guest. Uh, he won a group two last weekend, Breton of Dunn. Well, let's sprinkle a little bit of star power to the triple trio, and we do it in the form of Breton Evdala. Uh, Breton, brilliant to see you, mate. Uh, hopefully life is good in Hong Kong, and congratulations on the Group 2 success on the weekend. Yeah, hi, guys. It's um, Yeah, it was a good weekend, good couple couple meetings, and um, everything's going well. Family settled in well, so uh, see what we can do uh for the next few meetings. I know it would have been a challenge when you first got over there at the back end of last season, but... Everyone's nice and settled now and you're enjoying living in Hong Kong? Yeah, much better this time around. Um, you know, everything happened pretty quickly towards the end of the last season. Uh, the jockey club only approached me, you know, in a, you know, a, few, a couple of weeks before I actually moved. And, um, you know, we didn't have much time to pack up. So we were here eventually for 11 weeks. And, uh, yeah, everything was pretty rushed, no routine. So it was a bit of a battle in that regard. But um, since we went home, packed up, we've come back over. Um, have much more help around us now. You know, we've um, we've got a living nanny, uh, we have a driver, and the kids are you know at preschool and stuff. So, much more routine and uh, much more time for Taylor and myself too. Yeah, good. The the nanny right. and the driver sounds a bit like you, Rich. Yeah, sort of, uh, I wouldn't mind doing that. There. Sounds uh, good. Um, what you mean, the driver? <laughs> <laughs> Harking back to last weekend, Brent. Congratulations once again. Um, tactically, G, you got it spot on there. Just um, can you run us through? How it all transpired for you it seemed to make Zach just work a little bit early. And there was that late scratching just before the start that was key. Yeah, thanks. Actually, it was uh, yeah, it was a really really good result. Um, something I probably needed at the time from where I am in my stint here. But uh, yeah, I think I think things changed a little bit with that scratching. Um, I was probably going to be happy to sort of fall third the fence there for a little bit and and just to see what happens. And then when the scratching came out, um, I was just adamant that Zach was going to be positive to be outside Victor. I wouldn't be happy like it was the other day now with the run under his belt. And I thought if I could, I knew my bloke would begin well, um, but if I could just, you know, establish a position for the outside of Carrington Seals and force Zach to either sit three wide outside me or push on, uh, that'd be the better thing. And once he, you know, pushed on and engaged, it just... It just drew, you know, Karras and, and Zach together to, you know, to, to run their own race. And I was just happy enough to bide my own time. And I thought if I could beat him, I'd beat him late. Um, and everything worked out really well. Shane, just going to that turn as well, noticeable that Karras was staying well away from the fence, you know, before he rolled down to the to the, to the the rail. Why, why do you think he did that? No idea, but he did it. But they re went pretty quick for the first 200, Clint. Clint. I yeah. think they ran a 21.7 or 8, didn't they? In that section, yeah, not the I, first, but after, yeah, which is pretty quick, re relatively quick. But it all worked out perfectly for you in the end. Brenton just got there. Did you did you feel it at the hundred that you're you were going to be right in the game? Uh, on the point of the bend, I thought I was, you know, I was within a length of him. Um, yeah, Karras came under pressure pretty quickly. It was just to see how much you know the champ found. And um, when he didn't put me away, I, I had a little sneaky chance. And then at the hundred, I thought, well, it's game on here. But um, 
just lucky enough that, uh, you know, probably, you know, Zach's horse, he did wander around a fraction and my bloke tried his guts out and was able to get the bottom of the line. So it worked out really well. It's interesting. You referred to him as the champ. Is he still the champ or do you think he's a little vulnerable now? Well, uh, he's been beaten twice. It was, you know, I thought he couldn't do much more first up. Um, you, know, you know, he's obviously got the handicap, you know, at the moment. So when he hits those uh, weight for age, um, set weight race is probably a bit better for him. But uh, yeah, jury, I suppose, out's a fraction. Um, he had obviously a very long season and uh, he started, you know, pretty early too. So, um, yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see how it all pans out. It'll be if you're going to ride for a couple of winners for a stable uh, in the week we have you on, you'd probably want to ride them for John Size as well. It's great stable to have an association with Brenton. And um, you got the, the job done during the week on, on Red Desert. You just gave this a, you know, just stalk the speed here. It was probably just stripped that a little bit fitter. Is that a fair call? Yeah, fair call. Obviously, he's well down in the ratings too. So he hasn't won for a long time, but everything worked out perfect there. I thought he was home first up and Probably just peaked in condition, but um, he had a couple of trials in between. He was ready to go there on uh, Wednesday night, and I felt if he if he didn't get the job done there, then he was probably going to struggle for the season. So um, hopefully he takes a little bit of confidence out of that, and he obviously handles the dirt really well. So it was a good result, and like you said, John's um, John's a Hall of Fame trainer, and it was a you know for me just just to write a winner for him in general. So to start off with the Group Two on on the weekend, and then to back it up um, on Wednesday night, it's a big thrill and. He's been someone who supported me from basically the first week that I've been in um, Hong Kong. And as much as we haven't had a lot of success in that early part, um, he kept supporting me. And not only on the track, on off the track, he's got um, you know plenty of wise words to help me. And uh, I'm sure we can hopefully forge a few more winners. Uh, have, have you found, like, oh, it sounds like John's giving you good support. Are you garnering good support around as well? It seems like a number of stables are putting you on. Yeah, so when I was here for the eleven weeks, um, you know, with uh, yeah, yeah, you get given them the extra help with the manager there, uh, Roy, and I felt he was really important with trying to connect with the local trainers. Um, obviously, you know, the, the Chinese talking to the, to another Chinese, and um, I felt that was pretty helpful. You know, I was riding for a lot of more local trainers this time. It, I've been doing it all myself, so it's been a bit of a learning curve. I've never really had to do it before, and. Um, I felt I've been getting nice enough support and obviously hitting the winner for Tony Cruz first meeting really helped. And then I had a very frustrating sort of four weeks. Um, you know, you could probably, a, a short a short margin with a nose or a head and I probably could have ridden eight winners. So just those little things went wrong and I felt a little bit of support dropped off. Uh, but after, funny enough, after Sunday and then Wednesday, a couple more of the local trainers have sort of, engaged again and um, hopefully we can make the most of it because I think it's really important to um, obviously get those local trainers on board as well and try and spread your wings as much as possible. Can be a roller coaster, can't it, Shane? <laughs> it's up and down. It's The biggest thing in Hong Kong is having a licence and um, once you've got a licence, you just got to stick it out and work hard and uh, you turn it around. You know, jockeys get suspended, you haven't got rides, then you've got better rides, then you ride a winner and people want you. And uh, it was fantastic you had those two winners during the week and both very, very good rides. So uh, it um, could be a lot better for you, especially with Yui out for a few more meetings and uh, Vincent Ho. They've got to go to someone else. Yeah, it's um, yeah, just hoping hoping them can be in the right place at the right time. Like I said, the first... The first few weeks here, yeah, take the first meeting out of play, but the next few weeks after that, I just felt like the ball was bouncing and going that way. Yeah. <laughs> now I've just felt like the last week it's bouncing and, and sort of come my way. So um, hopefully we can make you know make a bit of use of it and, and get some good opportunities and, and have a bit of luck. I've obviously drawn a few awkward gates there on you know this weekend, so it's going to be trickier in Happy Valley. But um, yeah, got a couple of nice horses coming for, coming forward, and um, hopefully we can make the most of it. So four rides for John Size, three rides for David Hall. Just to emphasise your point, three winners, eight seconds, six thirds, and add in seven fourths. You've been so close, mate. So uh, hopefully things continue to go on the uh, the new trajectory at the moment. Who is your best ride out of the uh, the list we've got there? It's quite an even sort of book. Um, don't know too much. You know, I haven't had much to do with many of them. Uh, but like I said, most of them are drawn awkward, so they're going to need a lot of luck. Uh, Mr Valiant's trialled well. Uh, management folks, you know, good enough on his day. Juno Flash has been racing well, ready to win. Um, you know, looking forward to riding Pin Eye Galaxy in the, in the class two. I thought Kyrus Dragon couldn't, you know, was really good on, you know, first run back and Zone D is good enough, but he obviously stood in the gates the other day and he's trialled well since. So um, I have one of those books that I've drawn up and it would surprise me which one of them, if one of them lobbed, they all run well. So we just need to hopefully 
that little bit of luck on race day, which hopefully comes my way and uh, we can see what we can do. Yeah, well, just working backwards. I mean, Zone D ran well at this meeting last year and he, he can run well, but he, ha he needs to step well. Uh, I thought the, your most interesting runner in many respects, uh, Brenton, might be Ping High Galaxy there because he trialled pretty well. He gets a nice run on the back of a good speed and when he's right, that horse, he, he can be very good. He, he could go well for you and John in, in a good race once again. Yeah, completely agree with you, Hutchie. Um, you know, and he's um, he's drawn a, a good marble, which helps obviously around there, and there looks to be good speed. So he's drawn the right place and trialled well, ready to go. And John's team's now really starting to fire. So um, yeah, looking forward to riding him. I don't know what you've done, Brent. I was just looking at the barriers because you keep mentioning the barriers, and I thought, oh come on, he's overplaying that. So in race four, you've drawn twelve of twelve. In race <laughs> five, you've drawn seven of twelve. What luxury there! Race six, nine of 12, if you don't mind. You draw perfectly in race number seven. Two of nine, that might be the big advantage. But then they say to you again, hey, get back out to the visitor's draw. Uh, race eight, you are nine of 12. Nine of 12 in race number nine. And then uh, 10, a little more helpful. Gee, when you saw those marbles land, you're thinking, what is going on? I thought they were welcoming in here. <laughs> yeah, it's frustrating. And... Um, one thing with Hong Kong race, obviously the way it's set up, you know, barriers are very important. You know, in, in Australia, you can get away with things, you know, you think you're drawn awkward or, you know, but it's not that bad. We're here. It's the difference within finishing, you know, you draw one to four and you finish within a length of them on one horse and that same horse draws six to 12 and they get beat three. So, um, it's just the way it is that it was very frustrating and, um, look, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll just see what happens, especially around Happy Valley. I think they're actually also, forecasting a little bit of rain this weekend too. Not again. Also very important on the Happy Valley Sea track where these races are, inside gates are like gold yeah. because you haven't got far to the first turn in the 1,200 metres and you haven't got far to the first bend or turn in the 1650s. So I would say, I haven't got them in front of me, the stats for outside gates on the sea track and the C plus three at Happy Valley are disastrous. Yeah, well, inside can, gates are just vital. Or oh, rub a bit of salt uh, in his wounds. I can tell you there was a there was a big pattern at this meeting last year as well, so yeah. it may, maybe may be worth uh, following that and a sort of yeah. up and in was a good spot to be. And see, you've been right, you rode Seasons Wit in a trial recently, uh, Brenton? Yeah, I trialled him. So, uh, Zach, uh, I mean, he tried one other, so um, Jamie just asked me to trial him. So, I won't be riding him. Obviously not riding him, but um, he seemed to try well enough. He was a bit fresh in the gates the other day and just, just launched, but um, I thought he tried well. Yeah, he bounded in the air on jumping. I wanted to ask you about that because his trial in China prior to this against Nervous Witness was really good. He clearly looks the horse to beat, but I uh, thought we'd pick your brain, Brenton, and get your opinion on how he went because Jamie's given him three trials, actually. So in terms of fitness, do you think he's pretty close? Yeah, he's ready to go. He's ready to run well. So um, really, ha I was really happy with him the other day. And like I said, he just... Um, a shame with no, you know, sometimes they just a bit well in the gates, and he was just one that as the gates opened, he was a bit excited and went up instead of out. So, um, I'm sure he'll, he'll nail the start there on uh, on Sunday. Brenton, great to see you, mate. Love to the family, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in December. and Good luck this weekend. Thanks, guys. Brilliant to have Brenton and Dulla part of our team today. Let's have a look at the card on Sunday. Let's dissect the action from Sunday. Racing at Happy Valley. Now, make note there. In race number seven, we've spoken to Brenton Evdala about Ping High Galaxy up against Season's Wit. He's going to get a nice run on Ping High, but Season Wit will get a good run as well, and the trials will be good. I've got him on top. I've got him marked a 240 favourite. Happy to be with him. Nervous Witness, an interesting runner. He'll roll forward lead. Wiz Kids are an on-pace runner as well. I think Reward Smile back to 1,000 is really interesting. I'm going to throw him in uh, some Quinellas. I'll run through all that later. But uh, Shane Seasons, wet. he looks really well placed here. Lightweight, Zach on, nice draw. Yeah, he's going to be very hard to beat. His trials have been all right. I think he's had three, hasn't he? Clint in yep. um, China, just looking at this three. He's going to get the right run. It's going to be very hard to beat. He's done nothing wrong. Uh, you're right about reward smile. He hasn't raced over 1,000. Um, but coming back to the 1,000 from 1,200 with 115 pounds, if they go too quick, he could really hit the line here. Carpenter, the top weight, it will be Ford. He's racing very well. He's not the worst. But there's plenty of pace here, like you got Carpenter will go. Of course, Wizkid will go. Of course, Nervous Witness will go. So it'll probably set it up for something just in behind. Yeah, I don't like it when there's that, that trio yeah. of runners. They're going to put the pressure on, unless there's a massive pattern. And there was last year. It was a good spot to be. 
um, mm. on that fence on speed. But Seasons Wit's going to be right behind them, so I'm hoping he can run over the top and we'll get some money out of the Quinella, hopefully. Yeah, and a big win, and a big important race for Jamie Richards. Two wins so far, only yep. with a few runners so far. So he wants to really start to make a big impact. That's at race number seven. Move over to race number nine, if we can, Hutch. Uh, see if you can find us the winner here with uh, the ninth. We'd already heard from uh, Brenton in regards to Kyrus Dragon. Zach's riding sixth generation. Kyrus Dragon will run well. He's not a million miles away. It uh, just depends how much he's improved from that first run. But on top, I have number five, Brave Star, fresh up. His best is good enough. His recent trial was excellent. 360 favourite is my early rated price. Clendini will roll forward. Give him a good chance. Excellent peers is getting well handicapped and Atomic Force ran pretty well uh, in addition to all of that. I like this trial from Brave Star. Shane, I thought he went really well. Yeah, well, he improved with every trial. His first trial was only average. His second one was okay. And then this one was really good, you know. So he, he's improved with every trial in uh, China. I thought excellent pairs with the weight off his back, Clint, just looking at this. He, he drops from 135 pounds back down to um, 124 and he's got a good gait gate three so he might be able to race a little bit closer like be running fourth or fifth because he can get back a bit i think he's got a great chance here. yeah well he's an interesting runner versus brave star actually because they've clashed before i think last season uh, excellent peers was three wide the trip brave star won or ran second and beat him a few lengths but there's a yeah, big weight four lengths yeah there's a big weight swing in favor of excellent peers and and probably a better run but i'm, I'm happy to be with uh, with with Brave Star in the penultimate race. So 5, 12, 3 and 1, your numbers there. We move over to the lucky last. Britain rides Zone D and one of the few that it's drawn well draws Gee. jumps from three. Wowee, this is a tough race. Um, I, I, honestly, I think about, about any one of the first six or seven can win this and I, um, my early rated prices might change a little bit. Big Red's racing well. think number eight can go well. He, he'll position nicely on speed. Along with last start winner, Lean Hero. Seems a little dow. I've never been a massive fan, but he keeps winning. Brave Dreams will run well. June Planet's flying at the moment, but with June Planet, you do lose Bowman, um, and that is a bit of an issue. You do get Matt Chadwick, but I think Q's had a great association with him. Getting back to Big Red, um, I think he brings a stronger form line, Shane. Simple as that. Yeah, it probably does. He's racing very well. There's three runs this season. He hasn't stopped. He kept whacking away. This is a race you're going to know before because um, of the way the track's racing. If though if it's a leader's track inside, you can rule June Planet out. But if they can come from back, you'd you you got to he, he he can definitely win. He's flying. He's going well. But he's up in class three. Splendid Living's not the worst. Clint from gate two. He'll run well, especially yep. if it's a leader's track. You know, I know Big Red will can lead and dominate, but I'd say they'll lead on splen splendid living. And if it is a leader's track, he could be hard to run down, but you're going to know during the day, Clint. So this is a funny race. We can tip something now here, but it won't be the right horse on the day because the way the track's racing. Yeah, I think it. Um, in my opinion of this race, it's quite open. Yeah. I mean, I'd be happy to sort of bet according to what I see on the day with Shane and then looking at my market and see see if there's a little edge somewhere. Okay, so Devil Dom, uh, we get to see him, and that's 16.50 metres. Uh, what does G1 Goldmine tell us? Well, we like to look at these horses and just get a bit of an idea in terms of what distance they'll be best suited to. Now, this is an import that had, uh, obviously, form in New Zealand over up to a mile and a half or certainly a mile and a quarter, and the distance profile would probably say that they might have tested him over a bit more ground than he'd be suited to. So this 16.50... Could be right in his wheelhouse. They would have bought him for the derby. He had a little couple of nice runs over that trip. But 16, 1800 metres, this is right in his sweet spot. Well, that's interesting because you see yeah. El Manzu and you're straight away. You can see why uh, the connections in NZ are going straight to 2000 metres, yeah, aren't they? exactly. So, um, But against his own age group, he could probably still run well. But yeah, it's a, a, a mile first up for him. I looked at his trial. He looks like he's probably going to be that 16 to 2000 metre horse. OK, uh, let's have a look at our very best bets for the weekend. And we start our best bets with you, Hutch. The pressure is on, and you respond to the pressure. Yes, that's what we've got to do. Brave Star, I thought, was one of the better bets. Um, race nine, number five. I'm also going to take uh, a few little Quinellas. I think there might be some value in the Quinella. I've got excellent peers, Atomic Force, and I'm going to throw in Clendini. I'm be disappointed if we can't scoop up the exotics in that race. So that's race nine. Outside of that, I think my next best bets will be Season's Wit. I like the win there. I'm definitely going to throw in Reward Smile into that Quinella with a couple of others there. But Season's Wit will be short, will be hard to beat. And earlier on the day, race four, number seven, 
King Invincible, unlucky last start, checked at a key stage. In fact, Hugh Bowman copped a suspension for checking Zach. He'll map in the box seat, King Invincible, hopefully get the right run second up and go a few better. I've written them down, but of course, all of our subscribers on Hutchie's Honkers will get the full analysis race by race and a staking yep. plan, which I absolutely love. Um, Hall of Famer, what are you thinking? Oh, we like it when we double down. Mate, Shane. we call that we great gonna get, he's meeting. Gonna get a, he's yeah. going to get the right run from gate three. There's a lot of pace in this race. You've got Sergeant Pepper. You've got what else is there? There's plenty. Uh, Circuit 7 will go. Those two were in there, that race three. the other day, Shane. Do you think he would have – where do you reckon he would have finished the other day but for that interference very late? I wasn't. I reckon he nearly wins it. Yeah, he goes close. I, I'm not saying he would have won. That's hard to say. But he definitely runs close. Um so, and he didn't have what I liked about it. He didn't have a hard run. No. So it, sometimes they have a hard run. It just knocks them too much. There's no way that horse is knocked from that run. He had an easy run, got beat, what, two and a half lengths and looked as though he could run over top of them. So I would be surprised if he doesn't run well. Good gate, sack on. He won't be far away. Does Romantic Warrior win the Cox Plate, Shane? I think so. I, th I think he does. He, he, he doesn't have to improve a lot if he's fitter. He's going to get round there, no worries. He's got a very good jockey. He's got a lot of pluses tomorrow, I feel. And Whereas the other day, the other day he had negatives. I think the two to beat are Militarise and, of course, Victory Road. They're two horses that are unknown. Yeah. We know the rest of them. We just know them. Well, have a great weekend, mate. Thanks for your time today. Good luck, everyone. Yeah, it's going to be a beauty, uh, Hutch. Hopefully, luck, uh, for the World Pool, we're all following your yeah, tips we'll in be, there. We'll be there on the weekend. Shout and home, they're all warrior. Yeah, good luck, everyone. Thanks for watching uh, Triple Trio. We look forward to your company next week.